Greetings and salutations, my fellow lungfish, slimy and splayed all over the road. It is I, Eric J. Chucky, joined, as always, by the boy. Hey! This is the Two Nerds Podcast. Today we're talking about D&D subclasses. Yeah, there's finally enough of a crop to be worth doing a podcast on, so here we are. Here we are. But before we get into that, I wrote a book again. Uh, recently, you can buy it through the link in the description. Also, you can go to that description and buy all my other old books if you really want to. Also, also, we have a Patreon. Maybe we'll do cool things for you if you give us money on it. Not enough people give me money to really set up, like, tiers, and I don't know what y'all want anyway. But one thing we will do, and we'll do right now, is shout out the people who are on the Patreon, who give us the money and make it so that I can buy bread. Rob. Rob is good. <laughs> we like to make it fun, and I appreciate that you guys allow us to fail at that. Uh, subclasses. Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not going to do it. It's too old. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, now is not the time. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, basically they finally kind of, they, there's been a couple Unearthed Arcanas come out since the last time. There's a big one on feats that we're not covering. Uh, short version is good. Yeah, feats is too much minutia. Feats are good in general. Uh, next time I make a D&D character, I'm going to go shopping for cool feats in the new feats thing. But in Unearthed Arcana 4 and Unearthed Arcana 5, we had... A f- well, the, the subclasses things. Yeah, the subclasses things. Good lord, there have been way more than five. Well, you, you, yes, that's true. Yes, yes. yeah. Uh, just clarifying if you guys want to go to the website and download them, not to be mean and pedantic to the boy who is my good friend. Aww. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to think of the funniest way I could take that. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, so, you want to start? Yeah, yeah, let's let's just dive right into it. What the fuck? Um, so, the first subclass we have that we're looking at is the College of Spirits Bard. Um, this is... I have a lot of feelings about this subclass. I... So, I've been on record uh, on these subclass discussions for D&D as someone who isn't a huge fan of randomness in my mechanics for D&D classes, unless that's kind of the bit, Mm -hmm. and then you better do it well. Looking at you, wild magic sorcerer. Um, So, when I saw that there was a random table as like a central mechanic for, for the College of Spirits Bard... Oh no, that was that the spirit yeah. part? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got a little mm-hmm, but looking at it, I understand why. Yeah. I understand why it's a random mechanic. I probably would make a slight rule change as the DM to get the same effect without the randomness, but I understand why they did. Yeah, basically it's... uh, Well, let's explain the subclass first. Again, I pause. The thing they're trying to get over here is a fortune teller, a hungan, a... uh, Someone who speaks with spirits. Yeah. Um, They allow you to replace your instrument with a gaming tool. Or a skull. Or, yeah, a skull or a candle. If you're feeling that kind of way. If you're a little more into being a medium or perhaps some kind of shaman. Um, if you want to cast the bones, you can cast the bones. If you want to, if you want to talk to your magical skull uh, slash wizarding assistant, you can do that too. <laughs> I and the mechanic we're talking about is, is speaking to the spirits that you're channeling through your uh, spirit board. Yeah, your spiritual focus. Uh, The central way they do it is you use a bonus action and expand the use of your bardic inspiration to do a random thing. You roll your bardic inspiration die, and what you roll determines the effect you get. You then get to keep that effect until you use it, or you roll off the table again, or you sleep. That's super neat, and I understand why it's random. It's random as a form of power gating, because some of these are flatly better than the others... I do like how, because it increases as your die increases, you know, as you're saying here, the the later ones happen. They're, like, the ones that it's a 12-slot 
table. Well, obviously, when you start as a bard, you only have a d6 bardic inspiration dice. You can only get the first six effects. And they're good, but not amazing. And then as you're, you go up to a d8, the next two effects that come up are better. And then you go to a d10, and the next two effects that come up are better. And then you go to a d12, and the last two effects are real good. And they're designed so that you can't get them until the level where you have d12 bardic inspiration dice. And I understand that's a good way, a very interesting way of power gating. Something that's going to come up a fair amount in these four subclasses is Wizards is really experimenting with new ways of power gating things. Because the old ones were bad. I mean, they weren't great. I liked them, but they weren't great. They weren't good for evenness of class power. It's also nice. So, we might as well address this now. Yeah. Even though it's not really part of this class. Um, one of the main things is using the proficiency bonus as a replacement for what would usually be whatever attribute bonus. Yeah, in a place in all four of these as like a theme, you'll often see you use your proficiency bonus instead of your attribute bonus or sometimes where they would have like your blank times whatever number, they'll have your proficiency bonus instead or your proficiency bonus times whatever yeah now this is nothing new but it's something they've only started playing around with fairly recently and i understand why it's much more reliable than your ability modifier because a lot of people roll dice and it also is a great way of varying up stat arrays in various classes if you want to play a bard and have charisma not be your absolute must have best bonus there's ways to do that if you but and having those options is something that's a big part of the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, um, which we'll talk about after it releases. Uh, but it's also, like, you're supposed to use the standard array. Mm. Like, if you're playing Adventurer's League, that's what they want you to use. Boom. The standard array is... Boring and dumb I, It's and not garbage, but it's not great. It doesn't, it's not fun. Rolling rolling stats is fun. Rolling stats is fun. It's like like we say so many times. I came here to roll dice. Yep. Um, and you know what? In that way, rolling off the bardic inspiration table here, came here to roll dice. Right. I understand now. For me, I would give the option for a bard who was playing at my table to just use the effects from like the list of whatever die you can access. So if you have a d6 inspiration die, you can do the first six, pick one. Just because I like to let my players choose, you know, proactively use their stuff a little better than that. But like, I could see someone who having, having a great time with, all right, let's see what I got. Oh, I got the runaway. Well, that's not super useful here, but I'll keep it for later. There are people who like that. I'm not sure. one of them, but if you want to do it, you live your life. <laughs> Um, overall, I think this class is decent. I think it lets you play a, uh, a, a niche that's not really present so far in 5th edition and doesn't tend to be in first party stuff in D&D historically. Um, that's true. I really like their 6th level feature, um, which is... Um, you spirit session. Yeah, spirit session where you can have like a, you can get everyone around the Ouija board, and like, and like call up the spirit of Greynaught Mabel or whatever, and you get a spell from of necromancy or divination. In this case, I get the flavor restriction on class on like spell school because it's actually pretty powerful as an ability because you get a spell from whatever class you want. So long as it's divination or necromancy. Depending on how many people are in your little seance depends on the level you can yeah, get. Yeah, if you, if you can get five friends together, you can get a fifth level spell if you're high enough level. Mm, that's good. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. That's good flavor. That's, that's, mm, that's umami. <laughs> I, I, I actually really like it. It's really cool. It's really flavorful. It's a really great way to add some more variety. I really like this class because it also gives... One of the big things that feels eh about Bard is that sometimes they don't feel like they have a lot of options to impact things beyond you get a D10 or D6 or whatever, and you get a D6, and you get a D6. Yeah, and it, and it does give you um, some good shit there. Uh, it's a lot more variety. The effects on the table are a lot more variety of what you can accomplish, and that feels good. 
And I like that they're taking it in a direction of, does Bard have to be weird fop? Not necessarily. Um, they're even moving away from the second example of, does Bard need to be spy? Or scald. No. Right. You can you can be a voodoo priestess if you really want. That being said, my biggest complaint about this is I would have rather seen these concepts as a class. Especially in seeing how good they are. But they haven't done a lot in 5th edition in general with adding classes. And when they do, they often aren't happy with the results. Like, think about Artificer. How many versions of that have they turned through? Uh, I mean, I, I, you can say the same thing for a lot of subclasses, um, first of all. Secondly, they went through a lot of versions of 5th edition before they got to where they are now. Yeah. Uh, we just didn't see those because we were not paying attention. That's true, that's true. And um, something that is kind of something I want to address now because it's part of all, all four of these... These are universally higher power than anything in the PHP. They are just strictly better. I don't than know when everything in the PHP. They started mentioning it, but in the PDFs they they say that these are not balanced. Or they might be more powerful is basically what they say. Um and that's something else I was going to bring up. How many subclasses even on 5e tools can you click through the history of and see four different versions that are you know older or, um, like, can you go through the various different versions of and go, how many subclasses are just garbage, garbage, trash? <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, most of the PHP ones. Um, mm. So I, I, I would have liked for them to, because I feel like that's one of the things. So let's use a witch, for example. Okay. Like like your stereotypical fantasy witch lives in a hut out in the swamp. Has a cat. Shakes the bones. Has gives, a cat. Gives, has a big cauldron. Very mysterious. There's not a great way to play that in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. You can cobble it together. This is closer than anything so far. So far, yeah. You can make concessions, you know. But, like, you still have the rest of the bard set up. You're having to get really creative to make that witch through this. Yeah. And there's a bunch of different facets of something that could be a witch that I don't think Dungeons and Dragons, first of all, 5th edition secondarily has really explored. Even what Pathfinder calls a witch, eh. It's more just about their spell selection from what I've seen. Now, I might be wrong there. I didn't get delve into the later levels of Pathfinder, but... Um, Why would you? Yeah, call me out in the comments <laughs> after you've liked and subscribed to whatever. Anyway, uh, I would have liked to see... Go ahead and work on a new class. I mean, obviously you don't want to call it necessarily which but like you know there's a lot of shit you can do with a new class you feel I, like there was enough material here to be a new class rather than a tack on to bard yeah and don't get me wrong i 1000 percent understand why it's bard i get it i like it i in fact like it so much that i want to see it fully realized because i think there could be subclasses of this concept alone mostly honestly i think I think it could do with a bespoke spell selection. That would be cool, too. Well, and we're supposed to get more spells in Tasha's Cauldron, so... Because, like, the Bard spell list is kind of ass. It's not as bad as the Rangers. Well, that's true, but they're a full casting class. But the other thing about Bard is, once you've played one Bard, that's your spell list. There's not a lot of flexibility They've there. got, they've got the eight, they've got the... They're like, a, they're like any musician. They've got the songs you know, and they got the B-sides you never really hear. <laughs> but uh moving swiftly along to our next uh subclass to check out uh, well you know we usually have questions here i'm sorry i've completely forgotten to even list those um how would you play this i mean like it is perhaps a bit insensitive i would absolutely do a voodoo priest yeah just like a uh, like a hangun just fucking someone who someone who speaks to the wa. It's a way of doing it that isn't Warlock, which has always felt a little shitty. Oh, and that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> like, the closest thing they have right now, the closest approximation to a witch right now is is a Warlock. And it's like, I mean, I, are you suggesting that the only way other than the other magics to get your power is to bargain with dark spirits? Like, I don't mind doing the occasional deal with the Baron. I've actually done that several times in different versions of D&D &D because this dude is my usual DM and he likes to use various versions of Baron Samedi. Um, I, I like uh, 
I like Loa. I think they're very interesting. They're very interesting. Uh, hoodoo and, and voodoo and all that culture is just very, very interesting. It's very interesting, and it's interesting to put it through like an actual like high fantasy filter mm -hmm. and see what that looks like. And that's probably what I'd do here. Or um, recently, uh, I do <laughs> phasmophobia protagonist. Because uh, you, you can. Cause Jason that's... Jones, are you here? <laughs> Jason Jones, you're a gigantic bitch lord. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, use some necromancy spells to summon a spirit. Pretend like you don't have control over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good shit. Uh, I think my urge, and this is as someone who in real life reads tarot cards, uh, my urge is to go as a complete charlatan. Like, this is all bullshit. I'm just using magic. But like you're you're, you're like but that's a, a spiritualist, like someone that fantasy, uh, like like the lady James with Randi the would be nipples. real mad about. Yeah, yeah, just just someone hoodwinking people with with their magic. And, These are all these ancient spirits. I've I'm channeling up spirits stories from long of your ago. ancestors. It turns out you're descended from powerful warriors, so that's cool. Your your. Your ancient, your, your great 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 grandfather was a powerful warrior. I really, I'm just giving you a minor magical uh, boost to your physical stats. But this, but, people will pay money to hear this shit, so that's you know. So you're crossing over with yeah <laughs> yeah yeah wrestling Majir. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be funny. Um, uh, you're right. That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, Especially being a bard subclass. If this were its own class. Good lord, I have you, so many ideas. But as a bard subclass, you yeah. want to turn into the performative aspect? Yes, I, I do. I like that. Uh, okay, so our next subclass is for the Warlock. The Warlock. Um, it is the Undead Patron, not to be confused with the Undying. Do confuse it, this one's better. <laughs> um, well, that's why you don't confuse it, because you take the Undying and go, this isn't that great. Yeah, this is just a better version of the Undying mm -hmm. Warlock, just across the board. But slightly different. It's different. It's not mm -hmm. like it's just buffed Undying. It's yeah. different, but all of the changes are more fun or better. One or the other. <laughs> I agree. Like, um, they have a, instead of Undying's, whatever, I don't remember what it got. Not anything super great. Uh, it has, the, the first little thing they get is the form of dread. You put on your fucking Buffy the Vampire Slayer game face, and it's time to fuck. <laughs> I like that they went with undead here, because, you know, it gives you the option to have this magic come from a powerful lich, or from a... Vampire lord. Vampire lord. You, you've got options. Um, you could do some cool Dark Souls kind of stuff with this, definitely. Um, you could do some cool... Uh, uh, Vampire Hunter D is what a lot of these effects really reminded me of. And, like, your game face... They, another thing they've taken to doing in these Unearthed Arcanas is talking about, look, this can look like whatever the fuck you want it to look like. It has no effect on the mechanics. Yeah, I love that. There's Which a is thing how with, we've always fucking played it. Uh, yeah, but it's course, just nice but I like, to see I like it in that text. it's in the text now, because yeah. then I can point at the text and go, Shut up, Grognards! <laughs> um, Not that any Grognards fight with me now. I avoid them like the plague. Uh, Grognards, if you want to drive up our comment count, please. In yeah, the, in uh, the thumbs down, yeah, thumbs up. Whatever. It's all engagement. It Do what you want. <laughs> Retweet it to your friends and go bully these people. I, I'm i kind of bored during the day right now. I'm... I could use something unimportant to take my mind off things. Yeah. Send me main DMs on Twitter. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Hitting that block button, man. That's a, that's a mm, lot of effort. Delicious. 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 <laughs> Uh, uh, official third nerd train I uh, would like to add his support for that idea. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, I, I see like many of the minions of Dracula from Vampire Hunter D yeah. uh, or D himself for that matter or when you get to the later level features where your whole ass ghost comes out your body and you're a super ghost flying around doing crazy shit. Speaking of, you can be super ghost for an hour and it's not like astral projection or whatever the third the third edition spell was that's just you you get resistance to regular damage so does your body but that's it's not like you know if oh if 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 the spirit uh you know if the tether is severed then you're screwed no it's just you're just two now that's one of you just sleep that spells in fifth edition as well um, yeah. and it has similar uh effects yeah but like you can just you, you can just go sit in a room and then it project out your buffed better version uh, for an hour, so like for the biggest part of the hour of the day, you have no reason to be your meat sack. Be your pure, uh, undiluted spiritual self and blast motherfuckers. Yeah, again, uh, if you wanted to go with Vampire Hunter D, uh, the guy in Bloodlust, 
It's a perfect version of that. Yeah. Um, um, you, you, I love the little stuff. Like, they let you... Recently, I'm play, I've am play. i been playing a Celestial Warlock in a campaign that I'm playing in. Um, the DM's fairly new, but he decided to do some homebrewing because he felt like our party could use a better healer, and he gave me a radiant damage version of Eldritch Blast that can heal my allies. I The, the healing the allies thing is a little broke. Shh, don't you took a feat for it, though, didn't you? No. Uh... <laughs> I didn't have to. I took a feat for something else. But, uh, uh, it's... He, he listens to the podcast, so again, thanks, bud. Uh, <laughs> we're trying it out. We're gonna, we're gonna make it nice. Something, something that doesn't break things. But I've always felt like a healing it's, cantrip it's isn't... fun to hold A healing can trip isn't that bad. Yeah. Um, but, in I, any I case, can tell you, as someone who's played a healer a lot, the number of battles that have ended where I am aware that I did not need to heal anybody... Is high. Is very high. Speaking of someone who's played a healer to literally 20th level in 5th edition, a dedicated healer, like, it's not that big a deal. I had spells left over most of the time. It depends on your DM, and when it matters, it matters. But, like, a lot of the time, it's just anxiety cleanser. It lets you make bigger decisions. Yeah, and I got to make big decisions. But that was more like a... Transition. I really actually like that my Eldritch Blast does non-force damage. One, it's a great way of nerfing the the spell a little bit because some stuff is resistant to radiant damage sure. and nothing is resistant to force damage. But this version of the class does a really cool version of it. You can choose to have all your spells do necrotic damage when you are in your game phase form at a certain point, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, when you do that, you also get extra damage, which is great. Yeah, and it's just it's excellent because it lets you turn into the theming. It lets you pick other necrotic other spells that aren't necessarily necrotic damage spells, and you can still use them if they have other effects you want. And then you can turn them into the damage you want to be doing. That's cool. I I really like how the developers of this game have come to understand what matters and what doesn't in their game balance. Because some stuff really does. Well, and, and there's some stuff that we've been hung up on for, you know, 40, 50 years now that just doesn't, just not... Not important. Not important. It doesn't actually matter if a fireball deals fire damage. It matters only in the sense that anything else is probably better. <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing, right? Like, so many spells are fire-based... And yet, you gotta buy at least a feat or be a special character to make sure you're going to be able to try out those fire spells. That is a that is a balance thing. I mean, so long as you're if, if you're designing monsters, um, so long as you're putting stuff out there with fairly even application of resistances, then it doesn't. Like, unless it's doing force damage or psychic damage or but something. But, like, that, you know. unfortunately, in the setting that is kind of sure, baked in with the sure. AD, half the bad guys are resistant to fire damage because they're some kind of Satan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, big Shruggo. Uh, there can be ice demons. I don't see why not. In fact, there are. Yeah. They're also resistant to fire damage, I believe. Because they're still some kind of Satan. But okay, whatever. Uh, but no, I, I really like this. I think this is a well-made class. I really love Form of Dread. That's a cool thing you get. Combine it with like a, a Scourge Asimars thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, do both. <laughs> Nothing says you can't do both. Yeah. Um, you got good Renfield energy too. Um, just being... Because the way the, the text refers to you, you, you are like... Like chosen of your master, so that yeah, that it's feels it's more it feels more personal than like most warlocks because most warlocks are some extra dimensional being has put an investment into you. They're kind of they're watching it in the same way like a rich guy watches his like little mini portfolio. Well, and like I know a lot of campaigns do this, but at least for me as a player or DM, I never expect for us to defeat the nine lords of hell. God, no, that is. No, buddy, that's outside of your weight class. Like, I mean, I ended my my big 5th edition campaign with us fighting Tiamat, sure. But, like, that was only because I realized I accidentally built the entire campaign leading up to that as the most obvious conclusion. You really did. It actually was very unique. Yeah. Uh, like, or rather, very uh, organic. Yeah. That's the word I meant uh, Because it was not unique. Because no, I, I you, literally, literally fought Tiamat. <laughs> turned and looked to Matt Mercer for advice on that one. I was like, well, what did you do? Uh, but, um, like... 
I just don't think in that way. So those big demon lords and stuff feel so far beyond our scope. The same way you wouldn't go fight a cleric's god. It just doesn't seem like something that's going to happen. So fighting the warlock patron seems ridiculous. Except for here. Yeah, we can kill you, a vampire. Yeah, like, uh, even, a, even a real badass vampire. I could kill a vampire. At the yeah. end of the day, it's just a vampire. I mean, it might be Strahd, but, like, Strahd's made for killing. He's got a stat block. <laughs> <laughs> Don't he just. Um, and I, I just like that, that that's a slightly different approach to things. That's interesting. This, ironically, would have been very good for a character I played, uh, what, early this year, was it? Last year? Humst. Um, my brain. Erlang Sung. Oh, no, okay, yeah. I was, because he was an Undying Warlock. And then you had to remake him, because Undying Warlock isn't very good. Uh, I had to remake him, because I made some stupid Warlock decisions. <laughs> so he made a uh, Eldritch Knight instead. But, um, yeah, it would have been good. would have been perfect for Erlang yeah, Sung, actually. Yeah, yeah, This, combine that with doing a Hexblade, which is what you should have done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, perfect. He doesn't need any. He's just good. Yeah. Done. Sung is, uh, however, done as a character. Yes, he he, he was a the, bad guy. No. The apex of his storyline. Um, they never. You guys never actually ended up fighting him. He was no. too clever. There was a lot of stuff we never ended up doing in that campaign. But uh, let's move along okay. um, to the monk subclass. Well, I, I forgot to ask the question. How would you play this? It's because they're not listed. That's why. No. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, we have it in front of us. We're doing it a little bit different this time. Um, honestly, like, Renfield jumps right out at you. Yeah. Um, Renfield or, like, someone, like, the vampire groupie. Like, sure. someone who wants to be a vampire eventually and is, like, proving their merit. Uh, that would be good. Maybe, maybe, like, um, do it combined with the excellent vampire class and have it be a lesser oh, vampire yeah, in service to cool. their, to their, to their sire. That's, that's a cool idea. I approve of that. Um, I would go very Japanese with it. Uh, Castlevania style and the tendency that they have, or Vampire Hunter D for that matter, uh, mm -hmm. that they have for here is a vampire. Um, he employs Frankenstein's, as you do. As one does. Or, you know, what is this monster? Is this a specific kind of monster? I don't know, man. He's just got a real big tongue and flies around with his ears. Don't ask too many questions. I, that's that's what I would run through, is, is Vincent Valentine kind of shit of just, you know. Uh, now I'm, I'm Spooky Man. That's my game face. What, why, what is it? No, it's what it is. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, you, you do your game face? What's your game face today? Well, I've got eyes everywhere. Oh, uh, that's that's an that's an alright idea. Just picking a different thing. Yeah, why not? Because yeah. it doesn't fucking matter. Nope. Uh, but yeah, let's let's move along to the monk, to the ascendant dragon monk. Yeah, this is of all the ones we're covering today, the only one I think might be legitimately overpowered. <laughs> This has a lot of damage in it. Yeah, but it's a lot of it's tied up in key points and shit. We are still playing a monk. Not really. Like, there are... You can you, you can spend key points to do it more, but almost nothing in here is, requires a key point out the gate. Like, uh, their dragon breath. Hey, these are also things you'd have to be doing instead of stunning. Yeah, that's fair. You know what? Taking the monk as a class and going... They have access to regularly stun enemies all the time, and having DM'd a monk for a, for a decently sized campaign, yeah. that matters. <laughs> Trading that off for damage, it's not that bad. It's not like it's ridiculous, but that dragon breath gets real spicy. See, I thought it was fine. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, this is probably the best version of dragon breath I've seen that's not, like, the spell... I guess it's me thinking of like later levels when your martial arts die is ridiculous, but like it starts out as like a D four. That's not a huge. Deal. And it only goes up to a D ten. And like comparing that to what a regular dragon can do. Yeah, because you know what? But a, you can also do it a lot. It's super easy for three D ten to be three. You know what? That is fair. That is absolutely fair. <laughs> I don't have that experience, so I don't think yeah, about it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, more likely 15, but yeah, at 20th level, 15 damage. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> uh, I, I fart 15 damage at 20th level. Yeah. Um, basically, the idea behind this is you're in tune with the, the essence of the dragon. 
Um, it's like a Dragon Shaman, but like good as a class. Yeah, <laughs> the third edition Dragon Shaman, very very similar to this. Um, Dragon Shaman wasn't a very good class, but this is like that, but better. Yeah, you know, just cleaner. The theming is yeah, much much better. Um, I like what they give you. They give you little fake boosty wings. They give you um, yeah, you get little dragon wings for a second. You get dragon breath. You get the ability to. Give your allies resistance to certain types of dragon damage. Yeah, you get like a big badass aura, and they and, can like counterattack. And yeah, a big damage. retributive yeah. damage aura. And something I've noticed they're doing, they do a lot. Uh, I think they did this in the Bard, too. Is there's a lot of stuff that says, you do this thing, and then your allies can choose to use their reaction to trigger it. I like that for a couple of reasons. Okay, first of all, not every class, in fact, most classes don't, have access to something decent to do with their reaction. So this is a great way to give that to your yes. whole party. Yes. And like the bard had ways in the higher ends of that table, like you do this thing. you The person you choose and someone else, they can see both get healing equal to your bardic inspiration mm -hmm. die. And, and just like... That's just sprinkling. They're not. They're never going to give you a good version of the uh, warlord from fourth oh, edition. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But they're just sprinkling it in. They're sprinkling it in everywhere. Yeah. And I like that. Um, it's a sauce now. Much like uh, the undead patron can become super ghost, uh, the ascendant dragon can become super dragon. Um, yeah. Like, look, this is we're at Dragon Ball Z. Uh, stage of the of the fifth edition timeline now. People are getting power up forms. Uh, we're not to Super Saiyan Blue yet, but people are starting to get the power up forms now. Um. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the class in specific? I mean, you guys can go to the Unearthed Arcana or to Five E Tools and look up its specifics. We're not. I, here to... I I would never nerf it, but like if I had one of these in the in in the thing, I would I would. Give it a couple sessions, if I was DMing it, to see where it yeah, is, to yeah. see if I need to buff other people. Sure. Because that's who I am as a DM. I'm not going to nerf you. I'm going to give everyone else something else to raise well, you. Unless your shit is ridiculous. And that's kind of how it goes. It, it, is you kind of have to either raise up everyone else in the party, or raise up what you're up against. And that makes the rest of the party feel underpowered, so well, it's better to do the first thing. Unless the whole party's broken. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a different problem. But as a player... I don't know, honestly. I was thinking about this beforehand, and I'm not you about it. Like, I'm not completely over the idea of being dragon person. But I can't think of a good way to do this. That's very interesting. Um, first of all, League of Legends, like, last month... I know, this month, it came out with a set of skins that are, like, dragon aspect skins. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus, go look at some of those. They just they don't turn my skirt up these it, days. It, that's fine. I, I, I feel that. I'm that person in general. Uh, advice for everybody else out there is kind of what I'm saying. Hey, did you ever want to play Liu Kang? Yeah, Liu Kang would be a nice, very good way of doing this. Picking a Dragonborn and just really turning into the skin. This sure, is a great yeah. way to be the big Dragonborn, the Dragon Dragonborn, without being a Dragonborn sorcerer. Dragon Dragon! It's a huge freaking dragon! <laughs> but this is a good way of doing that without being a Dragonborn sorcerer. Of yeah. really turning into the to the draconic nature without having shitty hit dice. Um, yeah. Um, but, like, I don't really want to... Whoa, whoa. I just knocked over everything on my desk. This is a true nerd's catastrophe. Anyway. I, I don't... I don't really want to play that, is the thing. Um, the version I want to play, and mm -hmm. I, I, which is a surprise to literally no one, uh, is... Using, I think it's a black dragon. I think it's acid. Acid's not bad. Line uh, acid, yeah. You could get a dragon, one of the dragons who has the poison. And that, with a monk chassis, there's the super ninja I've always wanted. Because your breath weapon is poison. Poison mist! Yeah. <laughs> like, and just all of the poison aura, and that's just like a fucking smoke bomb. Like, you, there's so much you can do I there. know what I want to play. I know how to play this. Asuka. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. I mean, shit... Uh, you know, we said Liu Kang. Reptile is right there with yeah. acid. Just, yes. Yeah. Yes. Hell, Ice, your elemental ninjas. This is the Mortal Kombat class. This is the Mortal Kombat class. <laughs> you, can do, you can do acid. You can do poison. Unless, you can do ice. You can do lightning. In... You can do Raiden. You could play Raiden. Yeah, man, yeah. Uh, unless you do a noob side button, then that's Echo Knight. But, uh... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, all right. That's, you found it. You found a mm -hmm. way in. 
This is probably Japanese my... pro wrestler slash Mortal Kombat sure. character. This is probably my favorite class of the four, uh, which is saying something because first of all, it's a monk, and I'm traditionally kind of eh on monk. Uh, secondly, because I don't usually give a shit about dragon stuff, but I just really like how they implemented this. No, it's a really solid implementation, mm-hmm. and now I have a reason to want to play it. So awesome. Uh, speaking of dragons, we have one final subclass to share with you today, uh, and that's going to be the ranger. The Dragon Warden. The Drake, Drake Warden. Warden. Excuse me. It is the um, Beastmaster Ranger, but you get a Drake buddy. And they're kind of souped up. Like they're yeah, not... it's a little it's a little yeah. souped up from the Beastmaster. But it's not... Beastmaster's not weaker. It's They're different. No, yeah, because your Drake is only temporary. They only stick around for your proficiency bonus in hours. Yeah. And, like, they have different abilities. The Beastmaster Ranger, higher levels, you're... Your, your animal becomes a fucking source of a lot of damage. Whereas these guys don't ever really ramp up in damage so much. But they do give, like, boosts to, like, your your party and stuff. Yes. Um, it requires, at least for me as a DM, the, the same buff I give Beastmaster Rangers, which is they're just, they just have their own turn. You don't have to spend your resources to give them resources. They just have their own turn. Which I... I... And I understand mechanically why it's the other way, but that's not fun. Well, and I mean, we use Revised Ranger, but like... 5th Edition does not design around you using Revised Ranger. They're still using Old Ranger. So especially with Old Ranger, do not take those poor fuckers bonus actions. I know they're not bad, but well, like... Of all the classes, only Sorcerer on. has more use for its bonus action than Ranger. Yeah, like, that's that's not cool. Well, Bards. Bards can... I guess, yeah. Inspiration, but um, I don't have a lot to say about this one. It's not really all that fancy. It's just... No, yeah. You get a dragon who, instead of being a big beef stick made of damage, is a uh, big beef stick made of elemental damage, slightly less of it, and um, buffs. Yeah. That's cool. And you, yeah. you can breathe fire in this one, too. Yeah. It's 66 damage. Oh, uh, one and so it's I, better than the monk's one. Another thing I <laughs> do like, like about it is that what? you can change your dragon each time you summon it. Yeah, every time you summon it, you can just get a different dragon. Just Every time you summon it, I want a fire dragon today. And the other thing, this is in the text, your dragon can look like whatever you want. Yes, that's one of the places I noticed. You, that, can, yeah. you can literally summon up the dragons from Dragon Tales. It does not give a shit, so long as... It, it, uh, this is this looks like the pink one from Dragon Tales. It's a ice dragon. Sure. Yeah. They don't care. I love that. Yes. Stop caring. Just <laughs> fluff is fluff. Uh. Yeah. Um. So, how would you play this one? I mean, I know there's another class that says the name, but purple dragon knight homie like dragoon yeah you'd, you'd ride around on the dragon kind of thing well give not it a, once it has a high enough level to get a flying speed hell yes literally yeah, it's big enough <laughs> um yeah i don't i don't hate that uh i don't know that i want to play this i don't hate it as a class or anything i, I think it's well, very well built like it's not really your bag when it comes to rank right like <sighs> I'm just not that into dragons. I like this. I would definitely recommend this. For someone who is into dragons. Um, and as a thing that I have been asked to homebrew a lot through various editions, here's how I would suggest someone play this. Enjoy your Khaleesi. Yeah! You can summon up. You know what? Here you go. You want Rhaegar? Rhaegar. On docket. Fucking on tap. Drogon. From the spigot. Anytime. Yeah. And you're a ranger, so you've got a you got a cool bow, and you can fire your bow, and you can dress in fancy clothes, and be fucking Daenerys Targaryen. Maybe not the last season, Daenerys Targaryen. Hey man, it's your D and D campaign. Shit can go pear shaped for no reason. <laughs> As you really want. tired of DM for these fuckers, and you're like, you know what? Uh, I don't know. You go crazy. M- Mitzi's character goes crazy, and it it gets fucked. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's a great idea. Um. I, it's, I love that you can summon a different dragon every time. Yeah, that's that, There's something there. Like, Pokemon trainery there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it... <laughs> Dragon-type trainer. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of these ideas... Um, I mean, yeah, you, yeah, literally, Lance, you could do that. Uh, uh, a lot of these ideas 
inspire me as someone who is really getting more into homebrew as time goes on to, you know, oh, here's a way to explore this. Here's an avenue that they took in this official material. We can try to take inspiration from that in our own, you know, uh, reimagining. Yeah. So that's really fun for this. But uh, we usually at the end of this also do, um, uh, which, which of these is your favorite? Um, honestly, Undead Patron Warlock, it's just so well done. It's really good. I do like it a lot. It's so well done, and Warlock is a class that takes a fair amount of shit on this podcast, and I, this is a really, this is a nice version of it. I wouldn't mind maybe at the start of next year or something, maybe a little later into it, doing a, um, a catching up, a, maybe a new 5th edition podcast, but I think, because I think we've learned a lot about 5th edition from our original even from last year's original class podcasts. Like, yeah, maybe maybe bundle some stuff up. Yeah, just, I, no, just one big, like, you yeah. know, single podcast about it. Because I don't know that I have enough new thoughts about some stuff. Goodness, like, no. Original but, ra- original Flavor Ranger is still a little, yeah. That, that, that's not going to change. If you go Beastmaster. Everything else is fine. Everything else is Original fine. Beastmaster Ranger is just kind of... Uh, mm-hmm. But, uh, as I said before, my favorite on here is probably Ascended Dragon, specifically for the poison idea. But, yeah, second is uh, the Undead Patron. I think that's really cool. Uh, least favorite for you? Um, best. It's not like I like all these. It's probably College of Spirits Bar, just because it's the least. It's uh, even if it's the one I want to play more than like Drake Warden Ranger. It's the least bombastic. It's the other. These others are all like. You know that's a good new point. New shit. <laughs> I, I was gonna say Drake Warden Ranger. Um. But uh, Drake Warden Ranger is the one I want to play least. Right, College of Spirits Bard. That's the one I want to play least as well. But College of Spirits Bard, I don't. I have some qualms with the mechanics. They're pretty good, but like, if I'm looking at a list of, I mean, first of all, if I'm looking to play a bard, that's not why I came here. No, you want to fuck everything that moves. No, that's <laughs> Jesus. That's not me. But no, like, no, but like. Uh, fucking conceptually. You want to be the fun person. Uh, well, I want to be the bard. I want to have a character inspired by music and and entertainment. And that's, I, honestly, that's it. it. Is When you attach that, like I was saying earlier, when you attach that concept to the bard chassis, this is why the version of the character I thought of was a charlatan. Because you are a bard. You're, you, you conceptually link the two together as... You are treating this thing as entertainment. Right. And I don't... They're playing it legit in the... Legit? Legit. They're playing it legit. They're playing it legit in the text. Oulala. As though, you know, you are using this oration to tap into whatever similar primal source the bards tap into. But I think it flies in the face of the concept of the class in the first place so hard. Well, that's the funny thing is I've never thought of bard that way. Uh, like, I, we've talked about this a couple times, where it's like the bard bard with, like, the music magic is a thing you can do. But I've always thought of bard basically as, like, a dabbler wizard is is how I think of them. And that's not a bad idea. Like, someone who is a mart, like, someone who uses a bow and has, like, some armor, but also knows a little magic. Just sort of an adventurer. As that... much as I don't really want to play a bard because of their specific mechanics and spell list. Well, and that's the thing. Because that was the third edition bard, was the dabbler. Fourth edition turned bard into something else, and it's still there. And there's not really a great answer to the question mark of, where does bard magic come from? Who knows? Because they don't have a similar spell list to wizards, by and large. No, no, it's very different. It has healing magic. And yeah, so... It's some kind of semi-divine, maybe? Yeah, and that's, I like, that's, why, that's why I tend to think, and your, your opinion is perfectly valid, don't get me wrong, but that's why I tend to think of bards as being very... They're tapping into, like, the, the raw source of the tune or whatever. <laughs> the rhythm, man. There's a version of Bard that is that, and it's tongue-in-cheek in my head. Uh, and that just doesn't... If it I doesn't decided work to play with a, cool, witchy fortune. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't hate it. Like, I see what you do here, and I appreciate you you're sending it legit. And I get the idea of, like, especially thinking of it from a fantasy sense and not, you know, Jared Jones, Jared Jones, come at me, bitch. Uh, channeling spirits what and, up, demons? and, and it's telling me, you boy. <laughs> their great tales to inspire your friends. I would rather see an orator. There's never room for an orator class because that's barred. I mean, right, but I mean like taking those ideas, telling stories, that part of the class, make that its thing. You don't have to add this necromancy shit. That can be its own thing. 
that's fair. Like if they split up the necromancy and the orator into two separate sure, things. Sure. Yeah, and I think that's a really solid chassis here. I just think it's it it, it mixes just fine. It, it does exactly what they want to do. It's done really fine. well. But it's for just me not personally, for you. yeah, for me personally, I it's, it's my least favorite as well, just because it's the least. It introduces the least cool shit. Like even if Drake Warden Ranger's a little, it's just Beastmaster with a dragon. That's what some people are fucking here for. It's in the title, That's man. That's a missing link, dude. That's been missing. We've been waiting for that. It's, I mean, I remember being in high school or anytime I'm playing with new players who are like really excited about fantasy and they're like... Can I have a dragon? Yeah. It's like the second question they ask. The first one is, can I be a dragon? And like two out of the three here give you some kind of version of yes on that one too. And, I mean, let's not forget, Dragonborn exists. Um, I, yeah, in that sense, you could play a Dragonborn Drake Warden Ranger, kind of like I did Cousin Milos, um, the the sheep minotaur, with his the thing pulling his cart that was his grandma or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> These are my cousins. <laughs> uh, it'd be, be your Drake Warden Ranger Dragonborn. My son! My good son! <laughs> Go forth and sick him! Don't talk to me or my son ever again. <laughs> I think there's lots of fun play potential in that. Find a way to get fine familiar, get like a little, like a little tiny Drake. Yeah. And then don't talk to me or my son or my son ever again. You could use the feats from the last. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Feet big feats PDF. But uh, I think we're just about wrapped up here. I don't really have much else in the way of this. There's not. You have anything else you want to add? Uh, no. Usually we say gun to your head. Which one would you play? But I don't know if that's super. Like, I think that's covered in our favorite with a list this small. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, everything's better when nerds talk about it. Fuck it!